Working with a long, complicated document, these can be challenging for both the creator and the audience. I'd like to share five advanced tips to help you organize and manage long contracts, meeting notes, proposals, dissertations, or any long document with lots of moving parts. Hi, my name is John Sowash. I help teachers and students use Google tools in the classroom. I have created many Google documents and several of them have gotten quite long and cumbersome. One of my favorite new ways for managing these complicated documents is to use tabs. Tabs are awesome. These are brand new and very similar to how a Google Sheet works. If you look in your document over on the left side, you should see these new document tabs. You might have to open it up. You might see this little icon here. And by clicking that plus symbol, you can add a new tab. This is almost like having a document with documents inside of it. You can even have sub tabs. This is a great way for managing different aspects of a project. For example, I did a um, assignment for my students, this ecology research project, and rather than giving them access to three, four, five different documents, I was able to combine all of the elements into one document. We have the introduction, my grading rubric, and then the individual assignment parts for each of my um, group members listed in there. Tabs are awesome, they're brand new, and this is one of my favorite new ways of organizing my documents. Tip number two is an oldie but a goodie, and that is to use tables. Tables are a great way to organize mixed media. So if you have images and text and links, this is a great way to make sure that that information stays organized the way that you want it. So here's an example. I use these a lot from the resources that I create for students and teachers. I've got a table here with two columns. This column has a description, and then I've got a screenshot of the sample document over there on the right. I've also combined the header row here to make it a nice wide table. This is just an easy way anytime you're organizing maps or images and text and data, it makes it look very well. Here's an example of a hyperdoc that I created. Again, same concept here. We've got all of our information in the table, keeps it nice and neat. You can even put tables within tables to give students an area to type out their answers. To insert a table, super easy. You just go to the insert menu, you'll see table, and you can create a table whatever size that you need, add header rows, images, and more. All right, let's move into tip number three. You can use smart chips to organize your Google document and add rich content. Now, a smart chip is kind of just a fancy link that connects different things into your document. There's a whole bunch of different smart chips, and to get started, you just type the at symbol. You can add a people chip, which is a way to tag people for assignments or tasks. We can add a date chip, which is a way that you can connect your calendar invitations into a document. You can tag files, which is very helpful. Uh, simply search for the name of the file and it'll fill in and there you go. And this is really cool because it'll actually pull up a preview of your document presentation spreadsheet. If that file name changes, your smart chip will automatically update and it will verify that the people who have access to this document have access to any linked files as well. We can also add drop-down chips, which is pretty cool. So if you have uh, variables, you want people to select things like a project status, um, that's a, a good way to keep track of uh, how things are going. And then there are some premium chips. If you have an EDU Plus subscription, you can do things like the stopwatch, count up or count down. You can even add variables, which is kind of like almost like a mail merge where you can merge data into a document, creating custom documents based on um, other information. Smart chips are amazing. If you haven't played around with them, I'm going to recommend that you take a look at the video that I created that goes in depth into smart chips, showing examples and illustrations and how to use them in your documents. Here's an example of a website update document that I created. So we've got a website, we're making lots of changes to it. We've assigned different pages to different people. They need to update their status. There's documents with the website content linked to it. So we've got all of this information in a document and these smart chips really pull all that information, make it easy to see, to understand and keep track of a complex project. 
Let's move into tip number four. This is a really advanced one that can be very helpful anytime you have an incredibly long document and you need people to be able to access different uh, areas of that document. What we're gonna be doing is adding internal links so that we can jump to specific sections without scrolling forever and ever to find something. Now, I've already done this a few times in this document. So I've added some examples. So we just talked about the use of tables and um, how that can be useful. So I've added a link right here to that example. And if I click on it, it'll jump me into that exact tab and that exact section. Now, how did I do that? It's very easy. You simply highlight any area of text, go to the insert menu, and then scroll down to bookmark. And you can bookmark any section of your document, and then that becomes a link that you can paste internally or externally. And so when someone clicks on that link, it's gonna take them to this precise area of the document. This is one of several ways to add internal links to make your navigation a whole lot easier. Another way is to utilize headings. Now, headings are formatted text that have a hierarchy inside of your document. So title, subtitle, then headings one through four. So if I go to any area, attach a heading to that area, I can then add that link if I right click, you'll see the option to copy heading link. So it's the same thing as a bookmark, but headings are automatically uh, have links attached to them. Now there's an additional benefit to adding headings and that is to add a table of contents. Um, so you can see it down here. Let me go ahead and insert this. So you can see how that would, uh, what that would look like. So I'm gonna go to the insert menu, down to table of contents, and you'll see several different styles that are available. I'll insert whatever one I like. And this is pulling in my table of contents based on my headings. So you can see that this up here was heading one, so it's up at the top. This is heading two, three, four. So all of those are listed in a organized hierarchical way based on those headings. When you have an incredibly long document, this is an amazing way to make sure that you have everything clickable so we can jump to sections, chapters, and whatnot. I wrote an entire book in Google Docs, and this was a really easy way for us to organize that content and find what we need. Now, my fifth and final tip combines all of these elements together. We've talked about tabs, we've talked about tables and smart chips and headings and links. You can create a dashboard with all of these factors in place to let people more easily navigate your long complex document. So here is my dashboard that I've created and you can see this exact example if you look at the uh, notes for this video. The first thing that I've done is inserted a heading, a cover image, just adds a little visual interest. Then we've added a table here, as you can see. These are headings, which are linked to the various tabs that we've created. And we can create direct links to this, just like a document. If I click on that snowman there, you'll see copy link, and I've got that linked uh, in there. We've got these images as well. So for your viewers that are more visual, you can click on any of those images and same thing, jump to any of the sections in this document. By combining these elements, you make your long complex documents much more accessible to your viewers and a lot easier to edit and maintain as you need to make updates. If you're interested in more advanced tips for using Google Docs, I recommend you check out this video on inserting building blocks into Google Documents. This is a way that you can quickly insert pre-formatted content to use over and over again on as many documents as you have.